Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this. The SJMY version of the KFUN 5, right here on My Vaping Place. Hey everybody, nice of you to join me today. Thanks for coming. What we're going to be taking a look at today is this, the SJMY version of the KFUN 5. Now, yes, this is a one-to-one -one reproduction of the KFUN 5. And believe me, it is a very good replica of the KFUN 5. Yes, I use the word replica, not clone, because this is, even though this comes has the Zvomesto logo and everything else on it. As you can see from the packaging, this is not trying to represent itself as a KFUN 5. It is representing itself as what it is, a replica of the KFUN 5, a fully functional, working, real good version of the KFUN 5. Now, we'll get a little bit more into this when we get down onto the build deck in a minute or two. So give me a minute. Let's get on down there. I have to shift this microphone around and a few other things, turn some lights on and stuff like that. And then we'll take a look more of a look at this bad baby right now. All right. Meet you down on the build deck. Okay. Here we are down on the build deck. We're going to be taking a look at this today. The SJMY version of the KFUN 5. Um, as you can see, it comes in a very, very plain packaging. It just has a Zomesto logo on here, which I wish they wouldn't have done. I wish they would have had their own logo on here and said, you know, KFUN 5 replica or something like that. But this, it is what it is. As you can see, it's a very, like I said, it's a very plain piece of packaging. Uh, just this on the front. Uh, skew on the side. Nothing here, nothing here. Nothing there and nothing there. So let's take a look and see what we get inside. Okay, inside we have the tank, the guest of honor for today's proceedings. Uh, looking quite nice. Uh, comes, it, as you can see, it's this thing really is pretty much a one-for-one -one replica of the Zvomesto KFUN 5. Even right down to a laser etched uh, Zvomesto logo on here. Okay, on here, in this side, we have a glass, uh, glass tank. We're going to keep that out. And, of course, the usual little blue screwdriver and some O-rings and some extra grub screws. Now, the original Zvomesto KFUN 5 comes with two sets of grub screws in here, extras. One is the standard set of grub screws that are in the KFUN itself as replacements, just in case you should lose some. The second set that they have in there are slightly longer screws for use with much bigger wire. Unfortunately, SJMY did not do that. They just gave you two extra screws of the exact same size as what's on the build deck here. So you're going to be limited to the size of wire that you can put in here. Now, I, the largest wire that I'm able to put in here is roughly 24 gauge. That's the largest that I have. That is a little bit on the mm, iffy side. Uh, most of the times I've been building this, I've been building this with 28 gauge and building it to roughly somewhere between a 0.5 and a 0.8 uh, ohm build, uh, which has been absolutely fantastic with this thing. So, uh, this is basically what you get here. So, let's just move all of this out of the way and let's get down to the brass tacks. Now, just like the original KFUN 5, it comes with this e-juice on the hands. Really not good for trying to grab a hold of things. All right, we're going to have to break out the pliers here because this is really tight. As you can see, it's double O-ringed. It does have... Mm, God, I'm sweating so much today and with so much e-juice on my fingers, I can't do diddly. And because I just washed this and cleaned this thing up, the older O-rings are tighter than anything. It has the little um, palm insert in here, just like the KFUN 5 has 
to help to try and keep any kind of heat and stuff like that away from your mouth. Um, very nice little drip tip. Unfortunately, this is a little bit too small for my tastes. So let's just put that to one side there. Now, if any of you have ever had a K-Fun 4, you know that the K-Fun 4 is an absolute god-awful nightmare with parts. This, just like its real, its, its Zvomesto versioned um, cousin, is not quite so, shall we say, crazy with the parts. It's, it's much, much simpler. If you really wanted to, like I did when I first got this, you could tear this down to its individual tiny little parts and have fun putting it back together again after you've cleaned it up and everything else. But you don't need to take it down that far. You really don't. For everyday average vaping, you're going to have to take it down to just a few component parts, which are as follows. The fill cap. Now, when I got this, it did not have that little O-ring here in the center. You see that little O-ring on the center chimney? This did not have that in there. Now, without that, every time I took a draw on this, the juice inside this tank part here started bubbling. And I got, well, as they say, ugats for trying to get any kind of vapor out of here at all. Nothing. When I took it apart and I started looking it over and I realized that it didn't have the O-ring in here, I went into the spares bag and pulled out the O-ring that's supposed to be in here. As soon as I put that in there, this thing started working absolutely correctly. So just be advised, if you should decide to purchase one of these, check as soon as you get it that that O-ring, that one right in there, right there in the center is in place. If it's not, go into the spares bag, dig it out and put it in there. You'll save yourself a lot of time and hassles. Just like the K-Fun 4, the 5 has these little flat pieces on here. Now these are designed so that way as you're screwing this in after you've filled this up with juice, as you're screwing this in, oops, that's real good, almost broke the glass. As you're screwing this in, first off, you've got to put a little pressure on there to counteract that O-ring that's in there. But as you're pushing, screwing this into place, you're pushing down on the juice and the air that's trapped in here. If you don't relieve that pressure, what's going to happen as soon as you open the flow control here, the pressure of the air in here is going to force all that juice right into your atomization chamber and it's going to flood this thing out. So, to prevent that from happening, you have these little flat pieces on here, which, as you can see, right up to the point where the O-ring starts to uh, catch on the filling part here, uh, lets out the pressure. So that way, this tank does not become overpressurized. Okay? So, just a little piece of what you can expect on this. And as you can see here from looking at this, let me bring this up a little close here. Hopefully it'll focus in on this. Come on, focus, focus, focus. As you can see, the threading on this thing is absolutely perfect. The, the milling on this steel is fantastic. Even down in the center, you can see how, how smooth and how well done the, the, the grinding on the steel that, made the, that this came from. Absolutely fantastic. This, this, the quality on this product is absolutely fantastic. There are no sharp edges on this thing. No janky threads. No. When I got this, it didn't even smell of machining oil. There were no tiny little flecks of uh, steel from when they were turning this thing out. Nothing. This thing was absolutely positively pristine. So let's open this up here and so I'll show you what's going on here. Now, as you take this off, if any of you ever had a K-Fun 4, you know 
that on the K Fun 4, there's a little nut that goes in here. This does not have any threading on here. The K Fun 4 does not have any threading on the inside. Come on, focus. No, these cameras are not doing their job today. Ah, uh, hold on. I guess I'm going to have to do the manual focus on this. All right. Where's the focus controls? All right. Take this off automatic focus. There we go. That's a little better. As you can see, the threading that's in there. Now, that threading that's in there is, as you can see, really clean. Absolutely smooth. The polishing on this thing is absolutely fantastic. This is an absolutely beautiful thing. If you, even when you look inside, I don't know if you can see in there. Even inside there, where a normal polishing wheel cannot, you would not usually be able to get in. Even inside there, let me see if I can get this. Even inside there, there's one little tiny little bit there. Even in, even in those little crooks and crevices, this thing is absolutely fantastically smooth. It's been polished to a mirror finish, and I'm, I'm just absolutely blown away at the, the, the quality on this thing. Inside here, you can probably see the smooth polish on the metal tank section. You can't even see any kind of um, artifacts in there of when it was made, when it was polished. I mean, this thing is its beautiful. Here's the atomization chamber and the chimney. That is laser etched in there. And it's pretty, pretty damn deep in there, actually. So you never have to worry about that thing coming out or anything like that. And you can see those are your juice hole ch juice channels there. This is right now fully closed down. Your O-rings, really nice. Let's open this up, take a look at the deck. Come on. There we go. All right. And there's the inside of the atomization chamber. The polishing and the deburring and everything else in here is absolutely fantastic. What you're seeing in here right now, right in there, that's some of the remains of the water and stuff like that that uh, I use to clean this thing out. Because I've been vaping with this thing for almost two weeks straight. And I had to clean it out because it had gotten a little bit gunky. And here we are. This is the deck. Let me bring this up a little closer here. See if I can get this to focus in a little bit better here. There we go. This is what you call in-your-face photography. Look at those threads. Oops. One of the hairs in there. I'm just going to take this around nice and slowly so you can see. Some of the stuff that you're seeing on here are hairs and from the cotton swabs that I use to uh, help to dry this thing out. In there, you see those two little holes, one there and one there. That's mirrored on this side here as well. Those are your juice channels for the juice to come in and come up and go to your wicking. These are your screws. This is your negative screw, your positive block, a screw into the positive block. Okay. You have four separate different airflows adjustments on here you see those little pips there that's fully wide open airflow next one down is three pips that is the next 
restrictive airflow, two, and then one, which is, well, golf ball through a garden hose type, okay? In order to make the adjustments, what you do is, as you saw me do, you push up on this, you turn this until your airflow adjustment is right over that, and then you pull down on it. Now, what happens on one side also likewise happens on the other side. As you can see, this has a hexagonal design to it, but it's not an exact hexagonal. How they actually did this, I don't know. I, can't, I haven't been able to figure it out in my mind yet. Um, but if you put this in between here, it doesn't come up exact. And, yep, as you can see, you just put this onto the four, pull down on it, and that locks your airflow in place. These here, if you give me a second, let me get a pair of tweezers here so I can point this out to you. This is your airflow channel here. Now on the fully widest, fully widest spot, I don't know if you can see it in there, there's two very large holes, one there and one right there. That's the same thing on this side over here. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. There we go. Yeah, you can just barely make them out right now. Those supply airflow coming in, going up through the center channel, through this, through this airflow uh, tube here. Um, this center pin is fully adjustable. Uh, if you take this out some, you can make it fit just about any damn, any damn um, mod that you care to do without messing up this center block, okay? Um, on the KFUN 4, you would have had to have pulled this out, gone in there, made adjustments, put this back in the place, put it onto your mod, made your adjustments, that wasn't right, pull it off. It was a major pain. This airflow adjustment ring here on this one is absolutely flawless. This makes life so much easier. Now, the KFUN 4 and the, K, the KFUN 5, which is what this is... Oh, come on, man. I got all these little hairs in here. The, K, the, the original KFUN 5, like this, has a slightly restricted, oh, sorry, I keep dropping it down, has a slightly restricted uh, mouth, to, uh, direct lung pull, which I really like. My personal style of vaping is somewhere in the middle between mouth to lung and direct lung. I, do, I inhale directly to my lung, but I like a little bit of restriction on there, like a... Uh, it's hard to explain. It's, it's right in the middle. You got over here, you have mouth to lung. Over here, you have direct lung in the middle. And I like it pretty much in the middle, maybe a little bit looser toward direct lung. And this... Oh, man. This thing is fantastic. Okay. All right, let me bring the, uh, the focus back out on this. Put this back onto, man, onto automatic focus. And that's pretty much it. It's very, very simple. Yes, you can take this pin out. That takes off this whole airflow piece here at the bottom. That allows access to all of this stuff inside. Uh, for your average, ordinary, everyday vapor, I don't suggest that you do that because it is a pain. If you should happen to have to take this apart, I'm going to show you something right now. Sorry about bumping the mic there. I'm going to show you something that I want you to be very, very aware of. I don't know why I'm hiccuping all over the place today. Jeez. Okay. Let's take this apart here. Take out the screw. You see this O-ring right here. 
that black o-ring that's there make sure that you put this o-ring back and you do not lose that if you lose that this thing is going to be totally useless this is where your airflow comes in here goes in through those little holes in here to the centerpiece underneath of this o-ring baffle plate here and then up through this tube to come out up here okay this is peak insulator here insulating the block the positive block from the negative sides here so you can run this thing as hot as you want and you're not going to melt this thing you're, you'd have to run this thing so hot that you probably that the seal will start to distort before that thing starts to melt okay seriously I have run this thing hot hotter than I've ever wanted to use it and this thing here as you can see totally absolutely perfect okay so let's put this back on here and we're gonna line this up put this back into place now as you can see it does protrude slightly I'm not going to turn around and tell you to be that this is safe to run on a mechanical mod on a hybrid mod because I would not feel comfortable yes it does protrude it's about a millimeter protrusion if you want to take the chance that's your choice however I most certainly would not okay so Give me a second, let's get out the tools of the trade here, and we'll start making ourselves a coil to go in here. I'm going to be using a 28 gauge, which is roughly 0.32 millimeters, uh, stainless steel 316L, just plain flat round wire, uh, just plain round wire, and we're going to break out the coil master jig and kit here uh, we're going to make this on a 0.25 mandrel and we're going to need the Phillips head and yes we're going to need the scissors Okay, and we're going to need these. All right, let's put that to one side. Okay, this is your standard, ordinary, everyday round wire build. We're going to be wrapping approximately six wraps. That should get us about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 ohms. And no, this is not the version for the K-Fun, uh, excuse me, the Coilmaster version 4. This is the three that came with my kit. We'll put this in here like so. Two, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. And a give back and a little more sideway take out the spring clip off the excess here put that to one side flip this over pull so that way we get rid of that give back wrap Make sure it's nice and straight. Take off the excess. Put the deck in. Let's see if I can zoom in on this a little bit so you get give you a better idea what I'm working, how I'm doing this. There we go. Okay, there's your build deck. 
Now, you have your two screws here. This is your positive screw. This is your negative screw. Now, the way this has been designed, is you can, if you can see it there, there's this little L-shaped clip here. Uh, come on. Focus. Focus, daniel son. There we go. Okay, as you can see here, there's this little metal L-clip here. When you take your wire, you can have two ways of doing it. You can either back this screw out far enough so you can slip the wire between this post here and the screw and then wrap it around, or you can just take it and wrap it around like so. I prefer to make sure that this thing is totally secure. What I do is I will always unscrew this to the point where it's, the screw is just about to fall out, giving me room to slip the wire between the screw and that post. Now, these things here are absolutely fantastic if you're going to be doing something with like 24 gauge. It really works. You just take the wire, sw swing it around here, clamp it down, and it holds very nicely. But I don't usually work that way. I usually work with, um, all right, hold on a second. Let me bring the focus back here. I usually work with 28 gauge because it, it's the easiest for me to work with and it just gives, it, it just works nicely. It gives me the right number of wraps. It gives me the right num the, the right size coil for most stuff. I have other size wire, but I, I really don't use it. All right, so we're going to take this and we're going to clip this a little bit here. And we're going to take this and we're going to squeeze that in there like so. Let me get the straight screwdriver. Okay. Tighten that down. Take my pliers. Apply a little bit of tension. Lift it up just a little bit. Wrap it. Clip it. Oops, wrong one. And, hmm, all right, this thing is going to be a little pain in the butt today. There we go. That, that, that should do it. Tighten this down. Oops, I'm off camera again. Duh lift so that way it's nice and clear straighten and let's focus that in so you can see what she looks like right over the chimney hole. Okay. Okay. So, now that we got that, let's grab our cotton. We already got a piece there cut for leftover from some of the other stuff that I've been doing. So, waste not, want not. And yes, I do have a set of tools here that I like to use, so just pull this off, put that to one side, pull this off, put that to one side, 
let me zoom back out a little bit here so you can get a better idea what I'm doing. And take my scissors. I like to put this little arrowhead on here. It makes life a lot easier when you're trying to twirl this thing and get it through these tiny little coils. And you see how I left this side here flat? That's because that's how I gauge what we're going to do here. You'll see in a minute. Okay, so I take this and I flatten it back out again because I want this like so. I want the flatness like this. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to take the scissors and we're just going to hack this like so. Now my gauge here is using this, the threaded part here on the base, right there. That's my gauge. And do, 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 do. Yeah, right like so. Oh, that's not straight. This has got to be straight. Okay. Now, the reason why I said that that's my gauge is because once this is flattened down, this will reach just to the bottom here and just barely touch. And that needs to be straightened out a little bit there. There we go. Okay, so let's take the dental probe and we want to fluff these outer edges here ever so slightly so that way they get all nice and fluffy. And then we're going to take this and we're just going to press it down into the space in here like so. You want to make sure that there's, this is just, just above the deck. Like so. Yeah, we'll move this over here. We'll do the same thing for here. Now I'm sure there's a lot of you folks out there who who know how to do this and can probably do this blindfolded. But there's also a lot of people out there who don't. So whenever I do a review, I always do a build on these things. So that way, if you decide that you want to get this, you can turn around and you can just refer back to the video and, and you see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. And that's what it's supposed to look like. Like that. All right, and let's zoom this in. Take the autofocus off. And focus in here a little bit better. Like so. Now, let's see. 0 0.65 0 0.65 ohms not bad it's right where I wanted it to be okay so what we're going to do is now we're going to wet these wicks up yes I know I did not burn this coil in when I first did this. I'm quite well aware of it. But you shall see in a minute why I didn't need to bother doing that. Mmm. Orange popsicle. Okay, now watch.
that's the reason why. Because as you can see there, it is, well, actually, there might be a little hot spot in there. Let's see. 0.62 hasn't changed. See how much that, how much vapor this thing's producing? And if you take a look, you see how the coil is discoloring? That thing's almost perfect. So, now, what we're going to do now is we're going to shut that off so we don't screw this thing up. Put this on here like so. Tighten this all the way down. Now, I do not like using this. I like to be able to see what my juice is doing in there. So I'm going to just put this back on here like so. Spin this into place. As I said before, no excess, no extra nut on here to have to play with. Just tighten that down like so. And let's just make sure we got this thing set up right here. Yep, there we go. Okay. As you can see, as you turn this more and more, the juice flow control, the juice flow holes here, open up. I'll get into that in a little more in a minute here. Put that in. Fill that up. Press and turn. Okay, and one half, one, two. That is now fully open. And as you can see, the juice flow holes are bubbling quite well. Uh, let me just get a plastic 510 drip tip on here put that in there and oh dry hit how did I get a dry hit off that There we go. Guess there wasn't enough juice in there. Okay. 0.63. All right. And we're going to unlock this. Point five nine. it went down to. Oh, excuse me. Tighten that up. Just that there. New coil up. 0.61. Lock it. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's head up to the build. Let's head up for some FaceTime and talk about this all right i'll meet you up there okay focus daniel san thank you all right here we are back above decks uh excuse me for looking like i just came out of the shower that's because i had to have all the fans shut off pretty much uh while i was doing this because otherwise the noise which as you're probably hearing right now would have been considerable so i had to have it off and i am sweating like crazy just be glad you don't have smell of vision okay so here we are we're back with the um k fun 5 clone the sjmy uh, as you can see i have this here um 
No, I did not fill this up totally, but I did fill it up a little bit above there. But here, you'll get an idea as to what the uh, cloud production that this thing can produce in... Just bear with me. That's into a fan. I'll shut the fan off now. This is a 80-20 juice. This is my, oops, sorry. My orange popsicle, six milligrams, 80-20. And that was not carbing it or anything else. That was just nice, slow, direct, long inhale. So as you can see, this thing is absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> if you keep it between 0.5 and 0.8 ohms. Build your coil, wicket the way I just showed you. So that way it's, it's loose, but it's not too loose. You keep those coils tight. You pretty much don't even really need to even burn the coil in at first. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But this one here, I felt was didn't need any kind of burning in at all. Um, that's the reason why I didn't even bother to uh, glow the coils out to make sure that there were no hot spots or anything like that because I didn't think that there were. As it turned out, it looked like there was a little bit of a hot spot in there. <clears throat> and as the dry burn, the dry hit that I took, um, not leaving this thing sit and uh, <laughs> getting fully juiced um yeah well dumb but hey as you can see i have not done anything in the meantime between going down there and coming back up here i have not done anything to this this is exactly the same piece it's only about like maybe five minutes difference because i had to move the mic around shut the hot lights off over here that i have over the build cam and um basically turn this thing on to start talking to you now i've got some editing to do on that build cam footage uh it's about 38 minutes long in its raw state and i don't want to take this too much longer so i'm going to put up a picture of the 3f vape uh website right here as you can see the price on this cost me 24 dollars 99 25 bucks this thing here performs almost as good as well i shouldn't say almost as good as good because this is for all intents and purposes a one-to-one -one replica of the kfun 5 that's put out by Swomesto. this thing here is fantastic i have been taking this to work with me now every day for the past two three weeks and people have been there's like four or five vapors at my where i work and one of the guys who saw me there after I had just vaped, excuse me, after I had just re-wicked this thing that morning, was absolutely amazed at the amount of cloudage that this thing put out. So, here, I'll show you again. And the flavor on this thing is absolutely phenomenal. The orange is deep, it's rich. The cream flavor in this, on this orange popsicle is absolutely luscious. It's like you're biting into that sta single staple of summertime as a kid, the ice cream truck orange popsicle. Seriously. All the nuances of the sweet orange in here, all the nuances of the... Um, condensed milk that I put in here 
a little bit of the uh, vanilla bean gelato in there to give it to round it off and to take away some of the harsher notes. Yeah. No, I did not give you the entire recipe. No. There's some other stuff in there that I didn't mention. Sorry. But that's pretty much it. Um, if you're really interested in a K-Fun 5, but you're not sure whether or not it's for you, instead of going out and spending 100 and some odd bucks on a real one, pick one of these up for 25 bucks. I guarantee you, you'll turn around and be overly joyed with it. Now, like I said, it's a little bit of a restricted direct lung um, some of the direct, uh, some of the mouth to lung people out there might find it a little too loose, but if you knock this thing down to one pip on there, the direct, the mouth to lung people will probably find it pretty much what they're used to from previous K funds. Unless of course you happen to be somebody like Phil who, um, found it still not tight enough, but Hey, what can I tell you? That's how he likes it. Personally, I rock this thing on four pips all the time, and I just take my time. And as you can see, by the clouds that I was just producing, this thing is absolutely phenomenal. And it's basically sub-ohm right out of the box. That's it. That's all I got to say. I highly recommend this tank to anybody out there who's interested in K-Funds or might think that they might be interested in K-Funds. Uh, if you're like I am, your vaping style falls between mouth to lung and direct to lung, this is the tank for you. Seriously, you're going to love it, and especially if you're a flavor junkie like I am. Having said all of that, I will wish you good day. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand, and may you be in heaven a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Take care, guys. Have a good summer, and keep cool. Bye for now. But this is the reason why I decided to purchase this and to review the... Uh,